Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80s Moon Full War. So today we're gonna to talk to you guys about the um the weekend games, guys. We have a lot of good weekend games to preview. So let's start with the first game which we have here is Fulham versus Chelsea. It's a big game, guys. A big, big game. Um and I think the thing about Fulham this season, as as good as Fulham have been this season, I think Fulham have been excellent this season, of course. Um, they haven't really been that good in big games, though. I think that's really been the big concern I have with Fulham is that they haven't been as good as they have been in big games. You know, I was just looking at the big game record recently. You guys can show, I could just show you guys right here that their big game record has been underwhelming. You know, losing to uh, Manchester City, losing to Fulham, then losing to Arsenal. They even lost to West Ham. Then they tied against Liverpool. Liverpool is the only game they got a good result against, big game-wise. And they even lost to Newcastle. So... I do think Fulham have been good this season. Don't get me wrong. They have been good. Obviously, Mitrovic has been incredible for them. And um, uh, Alexander, yeah, Mitrovic has been really good. Then, obviously, you know, Pereira, Willian, Alina Reed, um, Anthony Robinson, Tim Ream, Bobby Reed as well. I just think that for me with Fulham is that they're a type of team that doesn't really score a lot of goals. I think, um, generally speaking, they score about one, maybe two goals at the most. Um, they occasionally do score more than one or two goals, um, but it's not that rare, common. So, But if you look back at this game, man, they've actually scored more goals than Chelsea, 10 more goals than Chelsea, um, and they conceded more goals, though. So it's a tricky, tricky one, considering how bad Chelsea have been this season, um, although it's still the table is still tight. Like Chelsea can still um, get into the top six. Like If they actually manage to win this game, they're going to actually be, um, what is it called, an um, eighth place. So... They still have a chance to get European football. Probably not the Champions League. I think that's a bridge too far, but they can still get European football. So the season isn't complete right off. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Chelsea win. I think Chelsea's gonna narrowly win this two goals to one. Um, it's gonna be a close game. I just think Chelsea's gonna narrowly do it. I think we're gonna see Mason Mount score a brace in this game, believe it or not. And I think for Fulham, we're gonna see Mitrovic score. I think Mitrovic will score, but it won't be enough. And I think Chelsea will take home a crucial, and I mean a crucial, three points. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. The next game we have is Real Sociedad versus Athletic Club. Now, this is another big game, guys. Another big game in the sense that I think this is a game that will really have a lot of meaning for that top four. Because looking at how top four is this season, Barcelona, Real Madrid, they're locked in. They're locked in. Atletico Madrid, I think they're also locked in, even though I know they're not in the top four right now. Let's be real. They should make top four. So we now have Real Sociedad, Atletico Madrid, Villarreal, well, Real Sociedad, Real Batiste, Villarreal, Athletic Club, all competing for that uh, fourth place spot. And the interesting thing is all four of these teams are kind of like on the same level. And this is a crucial game in the sense that if Real Sociedad managed to win this game, they could put themselves nine points clear of Athletic Club. And if Athletic Club actually wins this game, it's only three points behind. And that's actually pretty decent. And if it's a draw... 33, 27, six points still. So for for Athletic Club, they basically need to win this game. And this is taking place at the Real Arena. This is the Real Sociedad home state. Real Sociedad is generally good at home, guys. My thing with so, uh, Athletic Club is I'm looking at the recent games they have played. The recent games, they haven't been scoring enough goals. They've been A lot of games have been score, not, not scoring enough goals. And Real Sociedad have been scoring enough goals. I think the issue with Athletic Club is I feel like they're so reliant on Iñaki Williams. I think Iñaki Williams is so important to attack. And that if Iñaki Williams doesn't really deliver, it's really hard to really see Athletic Club getting those goals that are needed. Whereas Real Sociedad, they have firepower. They have David Silva and Alexander Shorlock. You know, these players um, are enough. And you also look at the other players they also have, you know, um, like um, Teke Sukubo or Yazabal. You know, I just think they have more firepower in the attack. Mikko Moreno as well. And um, I just think they have more firepower. Whereas I just think for Athletic Club, there isn't that firepower there. So it's a tricky, tricky one. I think this one is a very close one. I just give the slight edge to Real Sociedad to narrowly win this one. One goal to nil. And I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I'm going to say an Oyarzabal goal. I think Oyarzabal will score the winner in this game. Okay. Next we have, it is um, Tottenham versus Arsenal. The big, big game in the North London Derby. It's a huge game. Man. A huge game. And the North London Dar Derby. I think this game is a lot of meaning on this one because the thing about this game in particular that's really interesting is to see how Arsenal respond. I think that's going to be the thing because right now Arsenal are in a great position to compete for the title this season. 44 points. They're five points clear of Man City. 
Man City also have a tough game this weekend as well. They'll also know the result of Man City game because it'll still be played after the Man City game, the Manchester Derby. And I think for Arsenal, they're going to look into this game as potentially favorites because Spurs this season have been so inconsistent. Spurs this season have been so inconsistent. They have not been consistent whatsoever. Um, but the advantage that Arsenal uh, Tottenham have is that this is at their state. This is the North London Derby. And anything can happen in a Derby. Anything can happen in a Derby. And that's the crazy thing. Because a Derby form goes out the window. Form goes out the window in a Derby like this. And you look at the amount of goals that Tottenham have scored. They've scored 37 goals because they're 25. They have about the same record as Arsenal in terms of goal scoring. But the key difference is that their defense has been very leaky. Tottenham, have, their defense has been very sketchy. They haven't been great defensively this season. And I think that's the thing where Arsenal can capitalize upon is that Arsenal knows that their defense is very sketchy. Now, I don't think Arsenal defense have also been that good as well. Their defense has been good, um, but not as good as um, um, you're made to believe, right? And I just think that um, for Arsenal in particular, I think the key for them to win this game is they have to score in the first half. Because I think the longer it stays nil-nil, the more it favors Tottenham. The home crowd is on their side, and they're able to score. They can score that winner. And we've seen in the previous couple of games that Arsenal have kind of leaked goals. Like, look at the game against Brighton, right? They were comfortably cruising through that game, and then they conceded those two goals, you know? And I just think for Arsenal, man, they need to score in the first half. If they can score in the first half, I think they will get, they won't lose this game. It's a tricky, tricky one to call, guys. Um, because Tottenham, man, Kane and Son, they're going to perform well in this game. And Tottenham, we know, are going to counterattack Arsenal. Arsenal will probably have more possession. They'll probably play the better football. But Tottenham will be very defensive, and they'll probably be well organized. I'm going to go for a draw. I, I was going to go for an Arsenal, uh, Tottenham to win, but I just feel Tottenham this season just not been that great this season. And I think Arsenal would just about sneak it. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. A 2-2 draw. Um, it could be close. But I just feel as though that what's going to happen is I think Arsenal will actually score first. Then I think Tottenham will score two goals themselves in the second half. And then I think Arsenal will just snatch the late equalizer. I don't know why, but something just tells me Arsenal will just create great late drama. But whatever the case may be, man, it's going to be an insane game. And let's see if Bukayo Saka on um, Odegaard can show up and Martinelli as well. Because, dude, and Thomas Partey as well. It's going to be a massive, massive game. And then we have the next game we have. It is the Manchester Derby, guys. The Manchester Derby. It's it's another big game, guys. The Manchester Derby is always big. The interesting thing about this Manchester Derby in particular is that it's another title race here, you know. And Manchester United actually have some tricky games coming up. They have um, City at home, and then they have Arsenal away. And I think the interesting thing with City is that they also have some tough games coming up. They also have Man United away, and then they have Arsenal. Uh, sorry, I think they have um, Spurs at home. So, Manchester City are in a really interesting position here. This is a huge game for both teams. Both teams really need this win. And I think for Eric Ten Hag, this team has been great. This team has been excellent this season. They've been amazing in getting those wins. They've been so consistent. And they've been looking such a good team. Like, they, their defense looks rock solid. Verona Martinez have done a great job at the back. Even Luke Shaw has been really good as well. You know, even Juan Basaka has been really improving these last couple of games. And the midfield as well, Eriksen. And um, um, McTominay, well, actually, Erickson and Casemiro, sorry. Um, and then, obviously, even Freddie McTominay have done decent from the bench. And then, obviously, um, you know, um, um, Rashford has been amazing. Rashford has scored in every single game after the World Cup, which is incredible for him. And I think for the thing with Manchester United is that can they can they show up in a huge game like this? I think this will be a huge test for Eric Ten Hag because um, this team have been really good. They have had a really good streak of wins. I think the last game they've actually lost was the game against um, uh, City. Like, I think that's the last Premier League, last game that Ericsson has lost, which is coincidentally here. So, I think the thing for Manchester City is that how are they going to uh, approach this game? Because they're looking amazing at the moment. Mara has been stepping up. Holland has actually not really been that good in this year in particular. He's been kind of ghosting this year. Um, but, you know, who knows? He's going to maybe G up in this Manchester derby because we know that is. He personally hates Manchester United with a burning passion for obvious reasons. And then obviously we're going to see if, you know, other players like Bernardo Silva can step up, you know, at KDB as well. My worry with United is I think their attack is where I really am concerned because 
Marcus Rashford, as good as he is, I don't think he alone is enough to beat Manchester City. And I know Anthony can score the screamer odd in there, but is it going to really be enough? Because I can't really trust Martial. I can't really trust Bruno Fernandes. Like, like, and then Ilanga as well, Sancho as well. Like, United are really relying on Rashford. I think Rashford is going to have to have the game of his life to win this game for Manchester United. Because as good as he is, I don't think he alone is going to be enough. And I know Casemiro has been great, and I know Casemiro will definitely bring more defensive stability to United, and I think he'll give them the assurance because um, he is such a good player. Like he, He's defensively solid. He is also very good attacking-wise as well. Brings you so much attacking threat as well, defensive threat as well. And he's just all around a great player. It's going to be a very difficult game. I think this will be a very interesting game, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I'm going to go for a... I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. I just think as though that um, what's going to happen is I think um, Man City, I think this will be a back and forth game. I think Man City will score. Bernardo Silva can score. And then I think Rashford will score. I think this will be a free-flowing attacking football game. And I think this will be a very fun game to watch. I think this will be a very fun game. And I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And um, yeah, I want you guys to comment down below for this game in particular. And now we have the final game. The final Final game. Napoli versus Juventus. Huge game in the Serie A. This is a massive, massive game. And this is the game that I'm actually most fo looking forward to this weekend, to be honest with you. And the thing about this game in particular that's really interesting is how will Napoli respond? Because there's a lot of criticism of that Napoli are not that great in the second half of the season. Napoli is just a first half season team and that whenever it comes to the second half, they always crumble. They always fumble the bag. They never tend to show up. That's criticism. And it's valid. Like Napoli in the last couple of seasons have not been that good in the second half of seasons compared to the first half. And I think the thing for Napoli in this game is that it's going to be interesting to see how the approach because Juventus this season have been amazing. Juventus this season defensively have been solid, only conceded seven goals, and they know how to score winners. They've scored two winning goals in the 88th minute onwards. That is the hallmark of a true champion, a team that requires a late goal to get three points. That's the hallmark of a champion. Champions, winning teams know how to do that. And I think the thing for Juventus is that the longer it stays nil nil the more it suits them, the more it actually favors them. Because we've been seeing the last couple of games that Juventus just need the firepower in the attack. Because I'm looking at players that Juventus have, right? Vlaovic, who's out. He's probably not going to play this game. Chiesa, who's coming back from injury. Then you have Milik, who's all right. Then you have Di Maria, who's not really, you know, really in the just, you know, mood, right? And you look at the last game that Juventus played against, um, let's go look at the last game against Udinese, for example, right? They required a late winner uh, for Danilo, right? You have Moise Keen and El Di Maria, right? And it's such a weird formation because it's so defensive, but they just know how to get it done. You know, Locatelli and Kostic. Kostic's not really been that great. And the thing for Juventus is that they're playing, they're not playing the best football, but they're getting results. And that's the thing with Juventus is that ultimately this could just be enough to win the Serie A because the problem with the other teams is that Milan have an injury crisis they've they're i think the injuries to especially mike mcnon i think is really huge Inter the season have just not been good enough in big um, in big games napoli they you know do they have that mentality in themselves do have do they have them in themselves to actually win this league like do they have that in their locker which they're very inexperienced like a lot of the players have never really been this kind of high press situation before so it's a very difficult game I don't know what to say for this one, and I think this is a game that could go down to the wire. I think this will be a late. This will be a very good game. There's gonna be this is gonna be very low scoring, and I just think that for Napoli, the important thing is can can um Kavici turn up. I'm just gonna call him Kavici. It's just too hard to pronounce his last name. Can Kavici turn up? Because I think it's gonna come down to him. Because the problem with the other players like. Victor Osterman, he's he doesn't really he doesn't have a good record at turning by big games. Hervin Lozano, he's not been that amazing. Then Giovanni Simeone, he's decent. Raspadori. And Giza's also good as well. Zelensky. 
But this guy's going to be the main attack of the threat. He's going to be the main goal-scoring threat. And if he can have a good game, I think Napoli can win this. <sighs> I'm going to personally go for a draw. Um, I really hope that I'm wrong because I really want Napoli to win this. I want Napoli to win the Serie A. But I just think that what's going to happen is I think Napoli is going to score in the second half. And I just have a feeling that Juventus will have, they're just going to score a late goal. I think they're going to score a late goal and break Napoli's hearts. And I just have a feeling it's going to be some random guy, probably like maybe Weston McKinney. I'll just say him for why not. And I have a feeling Kovic is going to score. So it's going to be interesting um, and it's going to be a big game. So like I said, guys, there will definitely be a match review for that game. I'll definitely try to do a review for that game, a quick review for this game because it's going to be a massive, massive game. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you made it this far, consider hitting that subscribe button. Like this video if you did enjoy. Um, comment below your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember, guys, check out me in the parts of the description below. And before you head off, guys, please consider becoming a member of the channel, guys. Um, click the join button, and you can decide which level you want to be. A squad player, a star player. And remember, guys, the member live streams are every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And there, are member, there will be a member video every single week. So I hope that's all clear. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. So I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.